Howard Hamlin started off as the classic good-looking uptight boss who wasn't so good-looking under the hood. Though we all love to hate on Howard's douchey personality, it was quickly revealed soon after that Howard wasn't a true douche, but Chuck. Chuck, Howard, and Howard's father had built HHM from the ground up into a well-respected regional firm. And Chuck definitely did not want Slipping Jimmy to ruin this elite reputation. But how much was this prestigious firm of HHM even worth in the first place? Well, starting off, we'll look at estimating their revenue to estimate the size of the law firm itself. Jimmy reveals that his 20% portion of the common fund is worth about $1.16 million. This means that the total expected revenue from the case is $5.8 million. However, this is if Jimmy had succeeded in closing the case early like he originally wanted to do. HHM as well as Davis and Maine, however, were pushing back the settlement of the case as they were hoping to get much more. So given that Jimmy doesn't entirely go through with this original plan to cash out of the case, it's likely that the law firms were able to gather more evidence and raise the stakes. We'll say that they were able to get it up to a $10 million cash out. Moving on to how much of this the law firm actually gets. From Jimmy explaining the cash out situation to the people at St. Piper, we know that the law firms get a bigger portion of the pot than the victims themselves. Now, this isn't necessarily because the law firms are greedy like Jimmy portrays, but simply because running a law firm is quite expensive. Furthermore, class action lawsuits take years, so those funds have to be profitable for the firms over many years. Assuming that the firms get 50% of the fund and the Sandpiper residents get 30%, the two law firms would end up with $5 million in revenue. HHM was the original and the main firm working on the case, so it's likely that they get the majority of the revenue. With a 60-40 split, HHM would pull in a total of $3 million from the Sandpiper case. By the end of Season 5 of Better Call Saul, the case has been dragging on for two years. We'll likely see the end of the case in Season 6. So that's a three-year-long case coming out to $1 million in revenue per year for HHM from Sandpiper. The next step would be to estimate how many lawyers are actually working on the case to estimate the firm's revenue per lawyer. From this shot, it seems like up to 7 lawyers from HHM could be working on the case. But the thing is, the show's writers likely didn't look too deeply into such logistics and simply wanted to fill the discussion room. So that isn't a very accurate representation of how many lawyers were actually working on the case. From Davis and Main's side, we have Jimmy and Aaron, but that's likely it. Any more wouldn't make economical sense. Considering that Davis and Maine are doing about 40% of the work, HHM likely has about 3 lawyers working on the Sandpiper case. This would make sense because the median salary for a class action lawyer is $117,000 per year. This means that the lawyers would cost HHM about $350,000 per year or about a third of the revenue which is the industry standard. As for how much HHM profits at the end of the day, this comes down to how much their overhead is other than their attorneys. This would include things like the building expenses, court fees, filing fees, paralegals, and of course, the people working in doc review. Generally, this costs law firms between 20 and 33%, as the average profit margin for law firms ranges between 35% and 45%, with the best pushing into the 50s. So, we'll give HHM a healthy profit margin of 40%. That leaves just one thing left on the table, which is Jimmy's fees. HHM seems to be a pretty reputable law firm in the area. And so they definitely don't rely on just referrals to run the firm. The main reason they took on the Sandpiper case and are fine with paying Jimmy 20% is not because it's a lucrative case per se, but because it's a class action lawsuit which will significantly bolster their reputation. So for the vast majority of cases, they won't have to deal with this 20%. Now that 20% wouldn't just be pocketed by HHM otherwise but it would give them the ability to hire more lawyers and spend more time on the case to get it done faster and more efficiently. So, though their revenue from the Sandpiper case is $1 million per year, they would generally pull in 20% higher than that at $1.2 million. With all of this information, we can set up the basic financial metrics of the company. HHM pulls in about $400,000 per lawyer per year in revenue, of which they profit about 40%. 
So to estimate their total revenue and profit, we just have to figure out how many lawyers each of them is likely to have. The largest law firms in the world actually have thousands of lawyers, but we know that HHM is just a mid-sized regional firm, and Ohio State University suggests that mid-sized firms generally have 10 to 50 attorneys. HHM is bigger than Davis and Maine, but smaller than Schweikart and Coakley. Considering that those are also mid-sized firms, we'll put HHM right in the middle with 30 attorneys. With $400,000 in revenue per attorney per year, HHM would be pulling in about $12 million in revenue per year, of which $4.8 million would be profit. As for how much Chuck and Howard get from this, we can estimate this based on their equity stakes. On the stock market, companies are generally worth 10 to 20 times their yearly profit. But since this is a law firm and thus doesn't have tech company level growth potential, we'll give them a modest PE ratio or price to earnings ratio of 10. With $4.8 million in profit per year, HHM is worth about $50 million. When Howard buys out Chuck's share, we know that he gives Chuck $3 million, which is the first of three payments. Assuming that all the payments are equal, Chuck's equity in the company is $9 million, or about 20% of the company. As Howard owns his own share as well as his father's share, he would have about 40% equity in the company, or $18 million worth. This makes sense as this leaves 40% to be owned by junior and senior partners of the firm. If 10 to 15 of the 30 attorneys were partners, they could each get a solid 1 to 3% of the firm. While that doesn't sound like a lot, that's a solid extra $50,000 to $150,000 a year on top of their base salaries, pushing them well into the 200s and even 300s. And that doesn't even take into account the market value of their equity stake. So definitely a worthwhile job for most people. Anyways, moving back to Chuck and Howard, with their respective 20 and 40% stakes in HHM, they would get $960,000 per year and $1.92 million per year. In other words, Chuck is worth about $10 million and makes about a million dollars a year, while Howard is worth about $20 million and makes $2 million a year. And that's just their net worth and income from HHM. Both of them could have easily invested their incomes and grown tens of millions of dollars in net worth outside of HHM. Ironically, these actors are worth about the same in real life. Looks like they were the perfect selections for the roles. But that's just what I think. How much do you guys think HHM is worth? Make sure to comment that down below. Also, drop a like if you guys like the depth of this analysis and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari, and I'll see you guys on the next one.